Welcome to the State of the Sanderson 2023. I know it's 2024, but every year at the end of the year, I do kind of a big retrospective of my year where I look over all the projects I've worked on and kind of give an accounting to you, my, uh, my audience, of what I spent the time doing and how I feel about upcoming projects. Phew, what a year. As I write this, the first of the December boxes are arriving in the hands of backers, meaning the year of Sanderson has come to a close. By the time this goes live, I believe all of them will be shipped. Twelve boxes, with four books delivered, mostly on time. This was a big year for us, full of grand ambitions and full of Herculean efforts to fulfill those ambitions. Largely, we were successful. As is my yearly tradition, I'm going to go over all the things happening in my world, giving a yearly retrospective, but also talking about how things stand right now. As always, this is going to be a bit exhaustive, but I hope you enjoy the ride. Part 1. The Kickstarter A large part of this year was, as I've already mentioned, been dominated by fulfilling on our Kickstarter campaign. Now that it's done, we're all taking a deep breath and letting things wind down a little. So, what's next? Well, if you didn't see my video concluding the year of Sanderson, I think it is time to slow down. That's an idea contrary to the way business normally works. Every corporation is always focused on growing bigger and keeping customers spending more money. That's never been the way I see things, though. I still remember sitting down with another author soon after I was given the opportunity to complete The Wheel of Time, and this person, a good writer and wise in the ways of business, said to me, Now, make sure you go back to them immediately and pitch another follow-up series in The Wheel of Time world so your future will be secure. If I were you, I'd want to have a dozen books under contract, so you can keep writing these for the next 20 years. That might have been the smart business decision, but I rejected it immediately, because that wasn't what the Wheel of Time needed. And when others came to me and asked if I wanted to do a follow-up trilogy, I told them what I've always said. Robert Jordan didn't want one done, so I don't think I can do it in good conscience. More isn't always better. In this case, we've had five new releases in one year. I don't want or intend this to become the norm. I might try something like it again someday, but in the meantime, we're going to slow back down. Next year, we'll likely only have one book release, Stormlight 5. In addition, we are not going to try to continue the subscription box. We put all our best ideas into this year's boxes, and we're extremely pleased with the quality of what we've created. It's time to be done. That said, we do have two crowdfunding campaigns coming this year. Nothing quite as ambitious as the year of Sanderson, but both, I hope, worth your time. First will be the Words of Radiance Leatherbound campaign, happening on Backerkit this time instead of Kickstarter. That is in March. We will follow that with Brotherwise and the Stormlight Pen and Paper RPG later in the year, something many of you have been asking us for. I'll give Brotherwise some room to update you later on that, as well as time for my crowdfunding team to talk details about Words of Radiance. So, we're not stopping. I hope you'll find something to love in what we're doing. However, we're also not going to try to replicate the lightning in a bottle that was the year of Sanderson. I'm happy to walk away from that experience victorious and let the quality of what we created stand for now. Insert from RPG Creative Director Johnny O'Neill. Since 2022, Brotherwise Games has been working in close partnership with Dragon Seal to create the Stormlight RPG, the official tabletop role-playing game of the Stormlight Archive. This is a truly ambitious project that brings together some of the world's most talented fantasy illustrators and game designers. We shared an overview of the system at Dragonsteel, but we can reveal a few details today. The Stormlight RPG will launch with three books. The Stormlight Handbook is our core rule book for GMs and players, containing all the rules you need to play. The World Guide is a setting book that explores Roshar in detail, from its history and cultures to its unique flora and fauna. It's also a gorgeous art book packed with new illustrations from the world, from the Shattered Plains to Raul Elorum and beyond. We can't reveal the name of our third release, but it's a campaign book featuring adventure content that will take the heroes on an epic journey across Roshar. While every aspect of the RPG has been developed in collaboration with Dragonsteel, this adventure concept came directly from Dan and Brandon. It gives the characters the chance to bond spren, become Radiance, play a pivotal role in events leading up to the true desolation. We've designed this game for every Stormlight fan, whether you're a longtime RPG aficionado or a first-time player, or just someone who will enjoy reading through new lore and artwork. You can sign up to be notified when the crowdfunding campaign goes live in the second half of 2024. This is a dream project for everyone involved, and we can't wait for you to experience this fantastic game. Brandon will add, 
Uh, the artwork for this is wonderful. I've been enjoying watching them uh, put that across my desk all this last year. Now we're back to me. Part two, my year other than the Kickstarter. All right, with all of that out of the way, it's time to talk about what I spent the year doing. So here's a rundown using my spreadsheet of work done as a guideline. I spent January doing revisions on Defiant, then wrote Stormlight 5 for, checks notes, the next 11 months. Yep. When I started the year, I had about 100K words written. I now have 450K written. Across 11 months, that's a good writing clip. Not insane, but respectable. I stopped a few times for revisions, but I spent the entire 11 months straight working on the book. It's looking good, but I'm scheduled for six more months of straight revisions, which is the most difficult part of the process for me. So wish me luck. And update to the YouTube version, the book is completed at about 480k words, and I am working on the third draft right now as of January 11th when I'm recording this. Part 3, updates on primary projects. Stormlight. Book 5, now just called Wind and Truth, is basically done in rough draft form. I'm writing this update on the 2nd of December, and I assume by the time this goes live on my birthday that I'll be very, very close, if not done already. I was done, actually. No. No, I wasn't done. I was done a week later. I do want to warn you that Horn Eater, the novella about rock, will not be part of the Words of Radiance crowdfunding campaign. Why not? Well, I've realized that I would like to be able to write that sometime in the next couple of years when I'm missing Roshar and want to jump back and tell a story there. I don't know when this will be, though. It will likely be between one of the upcoming Mistborn Era 3 novels, so we'll see. But I don't want to offer it to you in the campaign since I don't know when I'll be writing it. Sorry. Once I finish Wind and Truth, the Stormlight Archive novels will go on hiatus as I write the next few projects listed. Mistborn. Era 2 is finished as of last year, and my next mainline Cosmere project after Wind and Truth is Era 3, along with the long-awaited Elantra sequels. I expect to start Ghostbloods, the name of the Era 3 series, on January 1st, 2025. Half of the next year will be revisions on Stormlight, and I'll spend the rest catching up on things, like doing a White Sand prose novel update that I've let languish too much lately. Cytoverse. Skyward is done. Please, if you haven't picked up a copy of Defiant, consider doing so. This has been my best-received, best-selling, and best-reviewed non-Cosmere work. I'm extremely pleased with how it turned out. Jancy is taking the reins for a sequel series we're calling Skyward Legacy, so I'm going to let her put a section in here talking about it. Now this is Brandon reading as Jancy. Jancy here. By the time you're reading this, I should have turned in the first draft of the first book in the Skyward Legacy trilogy. I'm working on the end of the climax now, and I'm thrilled with how it's turning out. I'm very happy with the book, and I'm looking forward to revising it over the next few months to get it into publishable shape. The series begins a few months after the ending of Defiant. The working title of book one is Blightfall. This is not the final title, so don't be surprised if it changes. And the book follows Skyward Flight, now a special forces unit, from the perspectives of Sadie and Arturo. The humans of Atritus are no longer prisoners or rebels, but full citizens ready to take their place the, on the galactic stage. Skyward Flight's first responsibility is to help the DDF Diplomatic Corps make contact with other humans in the old superiority human preserves. And what they find there may pose a new threat to their alliances, their galactic reputation, and the future of humanity itself. My intention for this series is for it to be all the things you love about Skyward while continuing the stories of many familiar characters. I hope you'll give it a read when book one comes out. Back to Brandon. I'm really excited by that, by the way. Uh, Jancy is uh, working from my notes on where to take the series, and we've done a number of brainstorming sessions, and I think these books are going to be fantastic. The Four Secret Projects. I thought I'd put this here to interrupt any questions. I do intend all four secret projects to be standalone stories. You might see these characters again, but for now, let's just allow them to be something currently rare in the fantasy science fiction world. Books meant to be read on their own and enjoyed without sequels. Part 4. Updates on secondary projects. Elantris. As I said, I'm getting ready to start this series again. Expect more updates next year as I finalize my outlines for this and Ghostbloods. Elantris will soon be a primary project again. Songs of the Dead. Back from the uh, proverbial dead, this book is actually ready. It's been sent out to publishers, and there are offers on it. So, finally, the long-awaited story about an American necromancer living in London is a go. Now, I did want to say one thing about this project. I built the outline in the world, but as things have gotten so busy in the Cosmere, and because revisions were taking a long time, I made the tough decision to hand this project completely to Peter Aurelian, the co-author. 
I did two pass passes on the finished novel, but I've realized I won't have time to support the rest of the series in that same way. The Cytoverse is the only non-Cosmere thing I can devote time to right now, and while I think this novel turned out great, I have decided that I'm not going to be involved in any sequels, other than the world building being mine. Now, some of you might try to read between the lines on this, so let me say, there's nothing to find other than what I just wrote here. Peter and I get along great. I think you'll love the book. It's just that I can only do so much. And some five years ago, I started to realize that I had to limit the number of series, particularly non-Cosmere ones, that I can work on. Peter fought valiantly for this book, though, as did my agent, who really believes in it. So it finally came to fruition. I expect Peter himself to make an appearance on my live streams in the future to talk about the book and the process, and I'll keep you all updated. But do expect to see this one released in the near future. White Sand. The time is nearly here. In July, I expect to take the graphic novel, my original book, and a lot of notes I've been making and create a definitive novel version of White Sand. Chris is a major player in the Cosmere, so having her book be readable in prose version is an important task I want to get to. Maybe we'll have this one for Dragonsteel 2025. Dark One. Dan is still working away on our novel here. I'll let him give you an update. Now, this is Brandon speaking as Dan. Hi, Dan here. Dark One is a wonderful project, and we both believe in it strongly. Unfortunately, as listeners of our podcast are aware, I was diagnosed with depression in 2021, and 2023 is the year it came to a head and messed everything up. So the book's been delayed while I get my brain in order. That's mostly done now, and I'm working hard on a new revision of Dark One. In the past, we've talked about this as the first of a trilogy, but the more we look at it, the more Brandon and I have decided that this wants to be a single book. Certainly, more stories could be told about this world and characters, but this first story, now that we see it take shape, is flowing very naturally into a clean and simple novel of about 150,000 words, give or take. At the same time, we're also expanding the story's scope a little to include Christina and Sophie, the characters from the audio prequel Dark One Forgotten. They were intended to be one-off characters exclusive to the prequel, but not only did we fall in love with them, they can help solve a lot of logistical puzzles we hadn't quite cracked in the original outline. All in all, the Dark One story will be a little bit shorter, but a lot more deep and rich. So we think we're, you're going to love it. Uh, back to Brandon again. Uh, if you missed Dark One Forgotten, the otter original Dan wrote last year, it's really, really cool, and you should check it out. So, super awesome danger. You might remember that when I did the reveal of the Year of Sanderson, I had five manuscripts, not four. The fifth one, let's call it Secret Project Zero, so that in discussing it, people don't think that it's one they've missed was a middle-grade novel about two brothers, based loosely on my children. One designs a video game named Super Awesome Danger, and the other gets trapped in it. It's a whole lot of fun. We've moved forward on working on some test images for the graphic novel, and I thought I'd share those with you. We'll be producing these completely in-house at Dragonsteel, using Ben McSweeney, who did the Shallan sketchbook illustrations, among others, and Haley Lazo, artist for the Alcatraz books, to create the art using my script. Back in 2019, you should be seeing now, my son Oliver drew a picture of a creature he named Robog, half robot and half frog. And he gave it to me. I hung it on my mirror and looked at it every day for many months. Super Awesome Danger started as the story of Robog and developed into a tale of two brothers who design a video game together and then one gets trapped in it. So what you're looking at now is Oliver's original drawing of Robog. Beneath it, you can find kind of our new version, taking his designs and turning them into a more polished version. And then finally, you can see uh, a sketch page as Ben McSweeney works on kind of the layout, which then Haley will take and turn into the final version. So you can kind of see this is what we're popping up right here. This is Brandon going off script. All right, I'll get back on script now. Part five, updates on minor projects. Warbreaker slash Rhythmatist. No movement. Remember that part about me only being able to do so much? Someday. Reckoners, Alcatraz, Legion. Finished. Nothing to report, though Stephen Bowles is still interested in doing some more Reckoners, so maybe someday. The Original. I keep letting this one slip through the cracks. We'll try to get you an all in ebook with this one as soon as possible. Unnamed Dan and Isaac Cosmere novels. Both have made progress this year, but we're doing this slowly and right. So nothing really to report yet, though Isaac has some words further below. Various Cosmer books I might write someday. The Night Brigade, Dragonsteel, The Silence Divine, The Grand Apparatus, Mythos, The Aether World book series. Now, this list keeps growing. My, my. Part 6. The Mistborn Film, Hollywood, and Video Games. 
So, the Mistborn film has been in development, but has run into some hiccups and is on pause for now. But I hope to have more news to share in 2024. Really, there's not much else to report. Snapshot, the novella, is still being tinkered with at Universal. It might be the only thing under option right now, because I basically put everything else on hold, despite interest, as I decide on a strategy. Trust would make a pretty good animated feature, though, don't you think? Part 7. News from my company. Here's the part where Emily, then each of the VPs, get to weigh in on things they want to talk about. Emily's thoughts. Emily here. In case you are not aware, Brandon and I sort of divide up responsibilities over the departments at Dragonsteel. He oversees creative development, editorial, narrative, and the marketing half of publicity and marketing, while I work closely with operations, merchandise and events, and the publicity half of P&M. As all of these departments have grown this year, Brandon and I found that we needed a bit of help to keep the, all the balls in the air. Fortunately, we have Becky Wilson as our executive coordinator and Ethan Skarstedt as our special projects coordinator. Both of them have been invaluable to us in a hundred different ways. During 2023, the things we've been juggling included meetings, meetings, and more meetings, uh, travel, guests, Dragonsteel construction project, and the convention. I'm grateful for supportive colleagues, friends, and family members who have made this circus not only possible, but a whole lot of fun as well. Creative Development, Isaac Stewart. It was a blast meeting many of you at this year's convention. I particularly loved seeing so many copies of the White Sand graphic novel come through. The om Omnibus was a labor of love, and we appreciate your patience, as well as Dynamite's hard work getting the book out. I hope you're enjoying all of the cool new things we added to it. Many of you have asked how the Nikki Savage novel has been coming along, so here's an update. The first draft is finished, clocking it at 118,000 words. About the same length as Shadows of Self. It needs a lot of revision before I show it to Brandon. He and I have discussed the story, but he hasn't seen the manuscript yet. So getting it ready for him to read is my next step. As we build out Dragonsteel's creative development department, I foresee more time to work on the revision. This year, Ben McSweeney has stepped into a more hands-on directorial role, taking the reins, orchestrating, and contributing to things like the Art for Defiant, working on that with one of our in-house art magicians and Tainix experts, Haley Lazo. Ben and Haley are both hard at work on pages for Super Awesome Danger. As the company grows and we work with more artists and artwork, more people needed access to what we're creating. Rachel M. Buchanan, my assistant, focuses on art relations and helps me get feedback to the artists I work with directly on our specialty books. She's also a fantastic author. Her debut novel, The Dollmakers, comes out from Harper Voyager on August 13th, 2024. More details here. Jen Neal manages our database and art assets, prepares print files for our Dragonsteel editions, and generally serves as our nexus of getting files to those who need them. This year, we added two more art coordinators to our team. Priscilla Spencer joined in January, and Anna Early in February. Priscilla primarily liaises with merchant events, shepherding merchandise designs and sometimes contributing her own. I'm looking at you, Mistborn Holiday Sweater. Anna is primarily responsible for making sure there's lots of nice art for the convention, like the DDF propaganda posters, creating designs and illustrations, ID for the cover of Hyperthief, and shepherding some cool upcoming projects. What was once a job for a map maker scribbling away in Brandon's basement is now a much more monumental collection of projects. I felt the weight of the bridge gradually getting lighter as each team member has taken hold and lifted. We're now practicing side carry, but we're preparing for the day when we'll leap across chasms. Narrative, Dan Wells. Hello, Dan again. You've already heard from me on in the Dark One section, but let me give you a bit of an update on everything else. We've recently passed my one-year anniversary as an official employee of Dragonsteel, and, as is typical with publishing, most of the time has been spent on things the public won't see for another year or so. That said, we have published a few projects. First, we were able to release Dark One Forgotten, which is amazing and incredible, so if you had not listened to it yet, please go check it out. It is currently in audio only due to a fun formatting gimmick we wanted to try, but that gimmick worked with flying colors, so even if you don't do a lot of audiobooks, you might want to give this one a try. Second, we've also published Hyper Thief, a short story set in the Scytheverse that Jancy and Brandon did, but which I helped put together. Some of my job as VP of Narrative is to write, and some of my job is to help other writers. It's awesome and I love it. So what does the future hold? So many wonderful secrets. Dark One is tentatively planned for 2025. A very cool Redacted is planned for 2024. And of course, my first Cosmere series is deep in pre-production. I've built an extensive outline, and I'm working with Brandon and Isaac on some amazing world building, and I love it all. This is a story I've wanted to write for literally years, and having the opportunity to co-write it with Brandon is a dream come true. Publicity and Marketing, Adam Horn. Adam here. It's been a crazy year, and I can't believe it's finally over, or at least nearly over. 
With all the new books, including all of Tor's editions of The Secret Projects, the book clubs, the many hours of live streams, and other video content on YouTube, we've been incredibly busy, a sentiment that I imagine is being shared by everyone here at Dragonsteel. But as Brandon said above, we have two more crowdfunding campaigns next year, so things may be slowing down, but they're only slowing down a bit for us. You may have already seen our first teaser for the Words of Radiance campaign go live this morning on Backerkit. We plan on posting it to YouTube on tomorrow. That highlights some more information about the Knights Radiant and their spread. We'll be having these launches every week leading up to the campaign start on March 5th, so be sure to stay tuned on Brandon's YouTube and other social channels, TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter, uh, slashed out X, for the, last, for the latest information. If you want to stay up to date on all our merchandise, you should follow Dragonsteel Books on their TikTok and Instagram too. We have more exciting videos and social content planned for the rest of the year. We can't wait to show you. Operations, Matt Hatch. Hello everyone, Matt here. It's hard to believe we've arrived at the end of the year of Sanderson. During my first week at Dragonsteel, February 2022, I was just as shocked to learn that Brandon had written these secret novels as you must have been. At that moment, I knew my journey here had drastically changed. Fast forward to today, almost two years later, and the last of the Sanderson fan boxes have been shipped. It's incredible. I've looked forward to this moment, to stop and breathe and celebrate this end and beginning with everyone. I hope you will join me in thanking those who worked day after day to help fulfill this one-of-a-kind journey that was the year of Sanderson. We did the seemingly impossible together, and now a new beginning approaches. So what changes await operations and human resources at Dragonsteel in 2024? First, we are working on new job opportunities. If you don't want to miss them, follow our socials and keep an eye on the jobs page at brandonsanderson.com. Beyond that, my departments have the joy of working on ways to make each employee's journey awesome. We have a lot of plans to do just that in 2024. Thankfully, it's been my pleasure to have a fantastic team whose nimble and capable efforts help make this possible. My great appreciation goes out to them, including Hazel Cummings, McKenna Salone, Braden Moore, Lex Wilhite, Kathy Sanderson, Emma Tan Stoker, and Jane Horn. And of course, we couldn't do this without the queen of special ops herself, Emily Sanderson. Cheers to all's yet to come in 2024 for fans and fellow employees alike. Merchandise and events, Kara Stewart. We had an idea of what 2023 would have in store, but what a whirlwind it's been. An absolutely monumental journey for the merchandise and events team. We just want to start things off by thanking all of those who we were fortunate enough to have on our bridge crew. There were chasms that we simply could not have crossed without them. Our story this year truly begins in March 2022 with the launch of Dragonsteel's Kickstarter campaign, where nearly 200,000 fans felt the thrill of the unknown and pledged to bring Brandon's wild dream to life. In 2023, you joined us for the release of our of four new books, on top of the already highly anticipated release of Defiant. World hopped through eight additional fan bundles and still had excitement left to spare for numerous new Dragonsteel releases outside of the campaign. Have you seen that ramen bowl? Though, through it all, we shipped over 775,000 individual shipments in one year. More shipments than Dragonsteel has done in all previous years combined. And we haven't just been packaging boxes either. In the middle of everything, we moved to a brand new warehouse, over 10 times the size of our previous one, attended Tampa Bay Comic Convention, and planned and executed our best convention yet. Dragonsteel 2023 sold out with 10,000 attendees, and we were beyond excited to see so many of you in person. It really meant the world to us. And if you didn't get a chance to see it, we built a brand new booth. The fun doesn't end here. Our Words of Radiance Leatherbound campaign is prepared to launch March 5th, 2024 on Backerkid. Our merchandise team is hard at work creating incredible releases for the coming year. And Jag- Dragonsteel 2024, running December 5th through 7th, is going to be epic. Stormlight 5 is almost here. Editorial, Peter Alstrom. The success of the Four Secret Project showcases the fantastic job the whole editorial team, Christy Gilbert, Karen Alstrom, Jenny Stevens, Betsy Alstrom, and Emily Shaw Hagen, did over the past couple of years. Working on those plus Defiant ran us ragged, but it also prepared us for the next big thing. Coming off a hugely successful Dragonsteel convention, where the editorial department got to talk to a constant stream of you, wonderful readers across both days, we've now buckled back down to work on Stormlight 5. We have part-by-part deadlines scheduled for the book throughout the beta reading, line editing, copy editing, production, and proofreading stages until late summer. It's already a hectic time. It's going to get even more so once we send the final pieces of the book to the editors and the beta readers on January 8th. Wish us luck. And a huge shout out to the beta readers and gamma readers, without whom the books would be in much worse shape. Light Weaver Foundation, Jane Horn. Hi, everyone. This is Jane Horn, director of the Light Weaver Foundation. 2023 was an amazing year. 
That was because of the incredible support we had through your donations and volunteer efforts. This year, the Light Weaver Foundation was able to expand our donation capacities, able to support a variety of educational initiatives and disaster relief programs, as well as support our core efforts to address basic needs and literacy for all ages. If you would like to learn more about the Light Weaver Foundation, please visit www.lightweaverfoundation.org, where you can expect a full year recap posting early in 2024. All right, now we're back to Brandon. Actual Brandon. Part 8, Projected Schedule. This one is going to be a little hard to gauge this year, as while a few things are set, a lot of others are in flux. For example, I'll be writing Ghost Blood straight through, maybe with a launch for sequels in between, and don't want to release any of them until they are all done. Let's assume they're all 200,000 words. I can do roughly 300,000 words a year. It means I'll be writing them all of 2025, 20, 20, 2026, and 2027. That would put the first one probably coming out in 2028, five years from now. In the meantime, we'll be working on some other cool things as listed below. So here's my projected schedule, very loose. December 2024, Wind and Truth. Okay, that one's set in stone. Spring 2025, Skyward Legacy Book One, question mark. And December 2025, White Sand Novel slash Dark One, question mark. Spring 2026, Skyward Legacy 2, question mark. December 2026, Skyward Legacy 3, question mark. December 2026, also, Horn Eater, question mark. December 2027, to be determined. December 2028, Ghost Bloods 1. Summer 2029, Elantris 2. December 2029, Ghost Bloods 2. Summer 2030, Elantris 3. December 2030, Ghost Bloods 3. Note that Dan and Isaac's Cosmere novels will be in here somewhere, as well as Super Awesome Danger and a collection of all my non-Cosmere short fiction. Also note that in the past, I've been bad at projecting things this far ahead. You can go look at this section in the previous day of the Sanderson Post to see. So this is all subject to change. Part 9, Updates from Publishers Around the World. Last year, I started letting my overseas publishers have a chance to tell us what they're working on and releasing while in the upcoming year. I'm happy to give the floor to them for a little while. Please show them love. They spent a lot of money on translating and publicizing my books, and many of them have become dear friends over the years. Brazil, Trauma. In 2023, tra Trauma Brazil proudly published Tress of the Emerald Sea and Words of Radiance. In 2024, they will launch the Frugal Wizards Handbook for Surviving Medieval England in April and Oathbringer in May. They are delighted to announce the release of the first three books of the Mistborn series, scheduled for quarter three, spring, in Brazil. Previous versions from an old publisher have been out of print, long been out of print, so it's great they'll be available again. For international fans eager to acquire Brazilian editions, Amazon remains the optimal platform. Trauma says, thank you for your continued support, and we look forward to sharing these literary adventures with enthusiasts around the world. Czech Republic, Tall Press. They just published the 10th anniversary of edition of Warbreaker in October. 2024 will bring Defiant, three of the four secret projects, and the Lost Metal. They're available in Tall Press's eShop and in bookstores throughout the Czech Republic. Denmark, Ulven og Uglen. Most recently, Ulven og Uglen published the Danish version of The Way of Kings as El Konges Vej. Oh my goodness. Stormly Fortalergene 1. <laughs> Sorry, Danish. Split into two hardcover volume, volumes. Danish articles about translator uh, Jacob Levinson's work on this and other books can be found here and here. In the fall of 2024, Olven Og Uglen plans to publish the Danish version of Words of Radiance. France, Livre de Poche. In 2023, Livre de Poche published Tress of the Emerald Sea, the Frugal Wizard's Handbook for Surviving Medieval England, Yumi and the Nightmare Painter, Skyward Flight, and The Silent Man. In 2024, they'll release Warbreaker, 10th Anniversary Edition, The Lost Metal, Defiant, and all six Alcatraz vs. the Evil Librarian books and collected in three volumes. Fans from other countries can buy the books in French bookstores or in local bookshops that ship internationally, if not on the online bookstores such as Place de Libraries, Molat, Desiteri, Fernets du Nord, Dialogues, and Cultura, or online retailers like Fanac.com, Amazon, Rakuten, Momox, and many others. Egypt, Cayenne. Trust of the Emerald Sea was published in fall of 2023. 2024 will release Legion, the Frugal Wizard's Handbook for Surviving Medieval England, and Yumi and the Nightmare Painter. They're also working on translating the Sunlit Man and the Mistborn Trilogy. Release dates aren't set yet. You can find Cayenne's Arabic translations on the following sites. al Shuruk Bookstores, Diwan Bookstores, Asir al Khatob. 
Germany, Dromer. In 2023, Dromer published Cytonic and Skyward Flight. In 2024, they will publish Defiant. They are also on deck to release Yumi and the Nightmare Painter, but likely in 2025. Their books are avi- available worldwide via Amazon. Germany, Peeper. In 2023, Peeper published the German translation of The Lost Metal, which they partnered with Horbuch Hamsberg and also released the audio. They also published the ger- a re-release of the German translation of The Alloy of Law, with, which was formerly known as Jaeger de Macht with a previous publisher. It had been out of print. So at last, both Mistborn eras are completely available in the same format. Additionally, 2023 saw a complete re-release of the Mistborn series in German, in ebook format, which also hadn't been available for some years. Their most recent release as White Uber Schmardergrunen C, uh, Trust of the Emerald Sea. In February, they'll be publishing. Oh dear. All right. Handbooker for den Gusenmain. Zauberger, Überleben im Mittelalterlichen England. The German translation of the Frugal Wizard's Handbook Surviving Medieval League. I hope you all are enjoying yourself. The online shop at www.peeper.de ships internationally. Netherlands, Volt. Dutch publishing house Volt made the Reckoner series available in audio 2023 to find a new audience for it. Netherlands, Iceberg. In 2023, Iceberg released Station Zondwild, Sunreach. And in 2024, they plan to release Read On, Evershore, and Defiant, plus the Frugal Wizards Handbook for Surviving Medieval England. Best places to order books internationally are bull.com and amazon.nl. Spain, Ediciones Bay, slash Nova. In 2023, Nova published the Spanish edition of the four secret projects simultaneously with the Kickstarter releases. A box set of the original Mistborn trilogy with new covers premiered by Tor and Defiant. In 2024, they will release paperbacks of the Mistborn original trilogy and the Wax and Wayne series with their new covers premiered by Tor, and they will do their best to join the U.S. launch date for Stormlight Archive 5. In Spanish, Brandon Sanderson was interviewed by El Mundo in April, by El Pais in June, and La Sexta TV in February. Turkey. Ithaki. Ithaki will publish Trust of the Emerald Sea in 2024, as well as Yumi and the Nightmare Painter and Dark One for release right before Turkey's biggest book, book fair in Istanbul the end of the summer. Ithaki's books can be purchased on Amazon as well in a, as in their local uh, Penguin, Penguin bookstores. Poland, Mag. In 2023, Mag published Trust of the Emerald Sea, the Frugal Wizard's Handbook for Surviving Medieval England, Yumi and the Nightmare Painter, and The Sunlit Man. 2024, they released White Sand Omnibus in June and Stormlight 5 in December. These online bookstores shipped their books worldwide. Amazon.pl, mpeak.com, and swatkisaki.pl. Serbia. In 2023, Mipil published all four secret projects in full color with the, the illustrations. In 2024, Mipil plans to publish all books from the Mistborn series as well as Warbreaker. All Mipple books can be ordered online from their website, mipple.rs, and on their biggest Serbian bookstore website, defleury.rs. They released a video in Serbian with the translator and ed- editor of Brandon Sanderson's books, where they discussed his works, challenges they encountered, countered, as well as some other fantasy books they would recommend to Brandon Sanderson lovers. Part 10, Conclusion. This document is always a lot of work to create, and I feel like I've done a marathon when we get it all together. I realized that for an author, I have quite the large business these days. Nobody else I know has more than a few assistants. I've always had big dreams and big ambitions. However, it's important to me that you know that, well, I'm still me, if that makes sense. I still spend most of my time writing the books themselves, despite all of this, because that's the part I love the most. This started as a guy in his basement telling stories, and I genuinely think I'd be happy if it had stayed that way. I like this a little better, but it can be overwhelming at times. My promise to you, however, is that I always try to keep a good work-life balance, as good as someone in my position can. Thank you for all your enthusiasm and support this year in particular. It's been incredible to see. For now, I just hope to continue entertaining you and surprising you for many more years to come.